Hey YouTubers, welcome back. Here's a steel concrete saw model TS420 I just got in last night and it's got no more compression. So I'll show you how to diagnose that. Here's what a new one costs in Canadian dollars here. So it's really easy to pull. So that's usually a sign of a blown top end, meaning the piston rings and probably the cylinder as well. Now before riding the saw off, take this little cover off here. Take the little rubber off and make sure that the decompression valve is pulled out all the way. If the valve is in the open position, all the air is going to escape out of the engine and you're going to think that you have a blown top end. So the valve is pulled up. I'm going to try it again. And it's still easy to pull. So I know there's a problem in the top end and I'm going to rip it apart. I'm going to start by removing the recoil so that I can remove the blade off. You're going to need a half inch socket for that. And you're also going to have to remove this one and that one for a total of three. Now the recoil is just going to come off. Then take off this torque screw over here. It's a T27. Take the hose off of here. Take the cover off. Now loosen this three quarter inch nut here to take the pressure off the belt. Now flip the solver like that and remove the torque screw right here. This is also a T27. I'm just taking this off to remove the water line. Now remove the belt off the pulley. Now remove the blade and the whole assembly. Now we've got just the power head to work with and it's going to be much easier that way. Now I'm going to take off the three bolts that hold the muffler and there's one over here so we can have a look at the piston and rings through the port. So let's have a peek inside there. You can see that the top ring is pretty loose there. And I can see little notches on the top of the piston. If you look at the left of the piston there, I can see what kind of looks like little scratches. So what I'll have to do now is take off the whole top end to investigate that further. I'll have to take off this cover here. At this point here, you have to go down there and disconnect the throttle lever. Just grab it and bring it up. Just be careful you don't break the plastic there. So at this point here, I have to remove this handle completely because the bolts holding the cylinder are underneath the crankcase. So I'll take off the three torque screws here. Now I'll remove the two torque screws over here. I'm gonna take this screw off over here as well. All I believe I got left is this little screw here. So you'll have to remove the torque screw here that holds the vibration spring to the body of the saw. And you can see as I unscrew it that the part is separating. Now the whole handlebar assembly should come off. Before I go further, I'm going to take off the wires from here. Take off the spark plug cap and wire out of its clip. And the switch wires. 
Now over here there's a torque screw here holding the plastic cover and one down here. I'm also going to have to remove this whole cover. Now this cover will come off easily. Now to get the cylinder off, like I mentioned earlier, you have to go underneath the crankcase. And you gotta go through these four holes here with your T27 screwdriver and get all the screws out. In case you're wondering about the Torx screwdriver I'm using, it's a still part number 59108902. 2400. It's actually a steel torque screwdriver, number T27. Once you've got the bottom crankcase bolt loosened, just flip the saw back up like this. Now you'll have to remove the two little screws that hold the clamps for the intake boot to the cylinder. So one here, one down there, just a slotted screw. Now just pop the clamp off the boot and the whole boot off the cylinder. Just be careful not to tear it. Also don't forget to remove the impulse line where the tip of my screwdriver is down here because you don't want to rip it apart when you pull the cylinder out. The way I'm going to carefully remove this is with the tip of my screwdriver and just push it back. You might want to use a dull screwdriver for that and it's off. You can see the connector down there. Now I'm going to carefully remove the bottom part of the boot with a dull screwdriver. Just enough to get it off the intake. And there we go. Well, now it's time to take the cylinder off and see what's going on in there. Just twist it up like this. Well, folks, here's the damage. Look at the top of that piston. It's all full of little nicks. Now, if we move this over, we can see the real damage. There's a piece that came off the piston. Piece of rings missing. So look at that. Pieces gone right off the ring. That's why it was so loose in the groove there. There's what looks like a big scratch over here. So that's finished. Let's look at the cylinder now. First glance, the cylinder didn't look too bad, but at the bottom here where my thumb is, you can see a deep scratch at the bottom. Now if I fill that with my finger, it's deep. It's too bad the scratch wasn't down here, because probably we could have salvaged the cylinder. You can see the little nicks there on top of the cylinder when the ring broke. Left all these little nicks there. Some YouTubers were asking me if you can buy just the sleeve for the cylinder here. Well, unfortunately you can't. On snowmobiles you can do that, but on equipment with small engines like this, I've never been able to buy one. So I'm not going to bother refacing this or honing it because the scratch is way too deep. Also I've noticed that there's a bit of loose where the connecting rod goes on the crankshaft here. If I move the piston and the rod sideways like this, you can see the slack in there. There's no slack if I try to move it up and down. 
but there is a bit of play even in the piston wrist pin and the little bearing on the connecting rod that holds the piston. So that's two places on the engine here that have wear and tear. And if you rebuild the engine without replacing the crankshaft and the connecting rod, the piston may tend to move from side to side. And this could be exactly why that the ring broke. It'll tend to rub too hard on one side. At this point, I highly doubt that the owner is going to want to rebuild this off. Now, some of you must be wondering what causes this kind of wear. Well, this could be just normal wear and tear for these saws. Also, if the air intake and the filters aren't cleaned regularly and replaced, a bit of dust may get in the engine and cause premature wear like that. They do work hard, these saws, though. The warranty, in some cases, is not more than 90 days on these saws. Some have a one-year warranty. And I've talked to a few guys who do that kind of work, and they say they don't last too long if you have to use them every day. So thanks for watching this video. We'll see you next time. Take care now.